Breaking news. An hours-long standoff ends when a deputy shoots a man barricaded inside a Raleigh apartment complex. We're live on scene with his injuries and how it all unfolded. Scorching heat is on the way. I'll show you the hottest days to come, the hottest areas, and the soonest we could see relief. With vehicles set to make a comeback in Raleigh parades, hear about the changes that Haley Brooks family says should have been in place years ago and could have saved her life. Now, breaking news from WRAL. Coverage you can count on. And we have breaking news this hour. A nine-hour standoff has turned into a shooting involving officers at a Raleigh apartment complex. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Ashley Rowe. And I'm Dan Haggerty. In the last 30 minutes, investigators told WRAL that the man who barricaded himself inside all day is now at the hospital with serious injuries. WRL's Aaron Thomas is live at that complex. This is on Water Oak Drive, where neighbors were evacuated as all this played out. They are allowed back in tonight, which I'm sure they're happy about, but a dramatic ending tonight, Aaron. Yeah, it's all a process, Dan. In fact, the uh, cones that were initially blocking the entrance of the Oaks apartment, uh, they, they have now been removed and we're seeing people go inside. It still also remains an active scene. You just saw the sheriff deputy vehicles that continue to come inside. There's also what appears to be a mobile command unit, unit for these deputies to work out of. We want to get you caught up to speed on what's new at this hour. We are still working to learn the name of the man that's accused of prompting the situation in the first place. It's all started as uh, deputies that were trying to to serve an eviction notice, then it then prompted a standoff situation. From the side of flashing lights to siren blares, it's been a scary situation for many neighbors out here. There's also frustration from them not being able to enter their homes for hours. Neighbor Nancy Wingett, a resident of 15 years, says that she's going elsewhere as long as this scene remains active. What do you do in the meantime? In the meantime, in between time, um, I think I'm going to go to my son's house. Yeah, I got my dogs in the house, and um, I just got to practice some acceptance and keep it moving like they said. So at this hour, this still remains an active scene. We are expecting the State Bureau of Investigators to respond to the scene, which is standard protocol anytime a deputy or an officer fires their weapon. Uh, on our late news at 10, we're actually going to be diving a little bit deeper about this. First responders you see here, they've been here for hours. Talk about some of the training they have to withstand some of this extreme heat. Aaron Thomas, WRL News, live in Raleigh. Speaking of extreme heat, it has certainly been a hot day across our area. Here's, here's a beautiful look at White Lake. I mean, being on the water is the place to be. Temperatures, if you like the heat, you're going to be happy. If you don't like this heat, well, they're going to get even worse in the next few days. Meteorologist Mike Mays in the WRAL Severe Weather Center with how long this heat wave lasts, Mike. It's possible it could go through all of next week, Ashley, and that's not something we want to hear. And I need you to be prepared this weekend. Temperatures will ramp up into the upper 90s the way high pressure is seated in the atmosphere. We have a downslope flow coming down the Appalachians, which will tend to heat up the air, not only for us, but for D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City, all going to get slammed by big heat this weekend. Now, it was 92 today. We expect 90 tomorrow and Thursday, so the heat tame in comparison. 94 on Friday begins to ramp up. Saturday, we're forecasting 98, feeling like 103. That's the heat index value, and we have more hot days to come. Sunday, 99 could easily slip and go up to 100 degrees, 104. The heat index, Monday, 95, we have a chance for storms. So maybe not quite so hot. And then we're back to 99 on Tuesday, feeling like 104. Over the weekend, our record highs both days are 100. Again, focusing on 98 Saturday, 99 on Sunday. And Ashley, there are signs that this, this heat could continue for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week as well. Wow. All right, Mike, thanks. <laughs> I'm Brian Schrader in the WRL Live Center. Following some breaking news right now near Dunn in the northern part of Sampson County, crews are responding to a large fire. This is on Ira B. Tart Road, not too far from the intersection with Highway 55. This is some viewer video from the scene there, and you can see the uh, huge fire there in the distance. We are working right now in the newsroom to find out exactly what is burning at that location. This is an image from just a couple of minutes ago on one of the DOT traffic cameras on I-95, and you can see that column of smoke there. Viewers are telling us that they can see it for miles around. All right, thank you. A brush fire that, that broke out near some Raleigh train tracks this afternoon is now contained. Sky 5, this video here, this is over the scene of New Hope, New Hope Church Road, right near St. Albans Drive, that intersection. Crews blocked off several roads in that area as they put out the fire. Investigators are trying to figure out what caused it. 
The family of a little girl killed in the Raleigh Christmas Parade says they are in favor of the sweeping changes to parade rules today. That includes the decision to bring back vehicles. The family said some of these rules should have been in place years ago and could have saved Haley Brooks' life. WRL's Eric Miller has a story. The city of Raleigh isn't just bringing back vehicles here. They're also making sure those vehicles have been inspected within 30 days of the parade itself. You're also not going to be allowed to throw anything during the parade, so no beads or candies can be handed out. And to sit in the driver's seat for a parade float or vehicle, not only do you have to have a valid driver's license and registration, you have to be at least 25 years old. After months of disagreement, finally some consensus. Sweeping changes to the city's parade rules approved not only by City Council Tuesday. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that was unanimous. With the family of 11-year-old Haley Brooks as well. In a statement through the family's attorney, the Brooks family emphasized Haley's love of both parades and making people happy, writing, while these measures will not bring Haley back, they might save another child. The changes not only impact drivers and vehicles, but parade organizers, sharply increasing required liability insurance, emergency plan guidelines, and making organizers responsible for ensuring parade participants are complying with the new rules. Is, is it feasible? Can we still do it? Jennifer Martin, the executive director of Shop Local Raleigh, says there are still many unanswered questions. Still, she says this policy is a step in the right direction. Because there is a lot of changes coming, but at least we know now what those changes are. Mayor Marianne Baldwin says city staff spent months working with some of the organizers of the biggest parades in the country. This isn't something that was just done out of the blue. A lot of hard work went into it. And she's confident that after nearly two years of uncertainty, this time the city has gotten it right. It's going to stick. As to how people in the community feel about these changes, well, the city of Raleigh shared some survey results, which were a little surprising. Out of 33 responses they got from people about whether or not the city should bring back vehicles, about half were in favor and half were actually opposed, with some folks saying they just preferred those pedestrian parades. In Raleigh, Eric Miller, WRAL News. By the way, the new changes take effect June 25th. Breaking news just into the WRAL Live Center. Sources tell WRAL that Novo Nordisk is preparing for a major expansion in Johnston County. The Danish drug maker is planning to add about 1,000 new jobs and make a $1.5 billion investment in Johnston County. That announcement could come as early as next week. We're going to have more details about that in our story at WRAL.com in the NC Capital section. All right, Brian. The Human Resources Director for the North Carolina Department of Revenue is without a job. Harlan Fry was arrested in California, charged with trying to solicit a minor for sex. Here is a statement from Long Beach Police. The preliminary investigation indicates suspect Fry arranged a meeting with a minor being portrayed by a cyber vigilante for lewd purposes. This is the YouTube video showing a man confronting Harlan Fry at a Hyatt hotel, asking him questions. It's the same man you see here in this state issue no, photo. In the video, Fry says the person he was supposed to meet with was a 15 year old, and he may have wanted to engage him in oral sex. At the end of the video, police arrive asking him questions, and then they put him in handcuffs. Fry has since been released. He was fired last week, just a day after his arrest. A lot of construction projects uh, in our area, of course. We can't say that some new westbound lanes along the Beltline near Wade Avenue are now open. So some of this stuff's getting completed. Crews opened the lanes this morning in what NCDOT is calling a huge milestone for this project. Drivers are now using permanent lanes, which include a reconfiguration of how you get to Hillsborough Street, that exit there. To get to Hillsboro, you'll actually start by using the Wade Avenue exit before continuing down a collector lane, as they call it. Crews are planning to have all of 440 at Hillsboro open by August, just in time for football. They are working to have the Wade intersection complete by October. Still ahead, an update on applesauce contaminated with lead and the stores who are still selling it months after the products were recalled. That's coming up. Plus.
Durham police are getting a big boost in pay thanks to the new budget. We're looking at how this could impact staffing, retention and crime as a whole in the Bull City. Let's take a live look outside. This is Durham, where a big decision by city leaders could make the Bull City safer. That's what they're hoping. City employees got raises in the new budget, with police officers receiving a big chunk of that change. That department has suffered from low staffing for years now. And as WRL's Monica Casey shows us why those higher salaries could make a difference in public safety. <laughs> There are 137 vacancies at the Durham Police Department as of today. That means they are just under 75% staffed here. The money in the newly adopted budget could make a difference. Officer Martin Cooper has been in Durham Police's recruiting division for years. He says the subject of money with potential recruits is huge and DPD is up against other agencies. That can be a challenge sometimes because when you have competitors, that are offering ten, twenty thousand dollars more than what our previous salary was. Um, it can definitely be difficult. The salary bumps will be felt at multiple levels. Recruits who were making forty-three thousand will now receive just over fifty-one thousand. Officers who start at almost forty-eight thousand will now be bumped to fifty-four thousand eight hundred seventeen dollars a year. Is it as important for retention as it is for recruitment? Uh, yes, and I would say more on the retention than recruitment. Cooper says retention is vital because officers with years of experience have expertise to offer others. He also tells me more officers means more 911 calls answered quickly and more presence in the city. Everyone in every division is doing the best they can with what they have and, you know, staying positive in that regard. But, you know, every every division is feeling it in terms of the vacancies that are um, there. We dug through the data on starting salary for police and other places around the state. The minimum pay runs from $53,000 in Chapel Hill up to 57,000 in Charlotte. So Durham is getting closer. In Durham, Monica Casey, WRAL News. And that new budget will take effect on July 1st. Uh, tonight, an update on applesauce pouches that were contaminated with lead. You remember Five on Your Side has been telling you about these for, week, for weeks and really months now. Well, it turns out many Dollar Tree stores were not taking them off the shelves. The FDA says stores left the pouches on the shelves for two months, well after the recall alert last fall. The Wanabana apple cinnamon pouches have been linked to reports of illness in more than 500 children. A Wake Forest family sued the company. There is new money for North Carolina to tackle lead contamination. Take a look at this. The second gentleman, Douglas Emhoff, joined Durham's mayor and representative Valerie Fushi in Durham neighborhood today. They watched as workers tested equipment for lead pipes and then announced a grant to put towards dealing with this issue. I'm proud to announce that the Environmental Protection Agency is awarding the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services human services nearly 1.3 million dollars to continue testing for lead and drinking water at schools and child care facilities the second gentleman said every water fountain at schools across the state will be tested for lead johnston county is asking people to cut back on their water usage during this period of hot dry weather the department of public utilities says irrigation usage in the county there is Some breaking news just into the WRL Live Center from Brunswick County. Sunset Beach police say that some sort of sea life led to a cut on a man's leg this morning. Happened around 1130. Say a 20 year old man suffered that laceration to his lower leg while in the water. Now they say it's some sort of sea life, but they're not exactly sure what caused the injury. The man was taken to the hospital. No word on his condition. Gotta look out for that sea life. Hmm. Gotta watch. There's a lot of stuff be. out there looking to get you, but hopefully he's okay. It sounded like just a little cut. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Get, get better, but recreational fishing and hunting license licensing fees are going up. They're going to increase starting next month. 
The Wildlife Resources Commission says hunting, fishing, trapping, and activity licenses, permits, stamps, and certifications will all cost more starting July 1st. The Commission and the Division of Marine Fisheries will receive funding from licensing sales. The increases will help cover operating costs that have gone up due to inflation. What hasn't, right? The last time there was a license fee increase was actually over four years ago, January 2020. You know, those go up every every now and then. The sea life are excited about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? you got to pay a little more. Fewer fishermen out there. The Carolina Hurricanes officially have a new general manager. Eric Tolsky took over for Don Waddell as the interim in that interim role uh, a couple of weeks ago. We keep showing this picture where he doesn't look too excited uh, for the job, but <laughs> yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure he, he very much is. So Waddell resigned after the Canes. There, he's smiling there. So uh, Waddell resigned after the Canes were eliminated from the Stanley Cup playoffs. Tulski, he knows this job. He spent the last four seasons as the, the Canes assistant general manager, and he's been with the organization for 10 years. So congratulations to him, and I think everybody's hoping for, for more big things from the Hurricanes. Yeah, you know what? Casey Hintz, are my 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 go-to yeah. on all things Carolina Hurricanes. She seems really optimistic oh, and great. really positive about Tulski taking over full time. So, we'll see. We'll see if uh, pe how people feel about the Carolina Panthers. Oh, yeah. uh, we're getting a, a new practice facility quote. There are more talks about that. Uh, football season almost here. Yeah. Charlotte approved plans to add a field house and other renovations to the team's location in Uptown. This comes after a failed attempt to bring a practice facility to Rock Hill, South Carolina. The team is also hoping to push through a $650 million plan to renovate Bank of America Stadium. Here are some of the renderings for that renovation plan. It looks beautiful. All renderings come to It's a tough pitch. I mean, you, they, they want a bunch of money from the city to build this brand new facility. Yeah. They want more money uh, to expand and build another plat practice facility. They're raising the price of tickets. I know. And uh, what was it, two wins last year? Two? <sighs> I know, but maybe, you know what, Bryce Young, we, we're going to get him the supports that he needs now, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I, I think a vote is expected next week on that. Very nice. Yeah. UNC joins NC State, unfortunately, don't want to bring this news, but uh, sharing that they have both ended their college World Series run against a Florida team. The heels fall into Florida State 9-5 to five this evening in Omaha. Yesterday it was NC State. Uh, Chris Lee will have highlights tonight at 10 on Fox 50 and 11 on WRL because there still is a whole lot to celebrate there. Absolutely. And NC State's baseball team is back in Raleigh after an incredible college run series tour. You see them here. They uh, returned home. This was this afternoon. Dozens of fans gathering there at Doak Field to, to greet the Pac-9 and celebrate what was an incredible season, even though it probably came a little shorter than, than they were hoping. The Pac came up uh, short yesterday in Omaha, losing 5-4 to the Florida Gators in that elimination bracket. But look at that. Did you see that bucket hat on that guy? That was... Awesome. It's tough to pull off a bucket hat. I'm, I don't have that kind of look. <laughs> I think you could do it. You could definitely do it. Thanks for being with us tonight. Good night. Keep watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257.